The supply chain and cybersecurity is a topic of my conversation today with Zach Rogers. He is Assistant Professor of Supply Chain Management at Colorado State University. Hello, Zach. Hi. So why is cybersecurity important to supply chain anyway? And sure, should it be considered as such? Absolutely. Well, you know, about two thirds of all cyber attacks now come through the supply chain. Mm. And so if you think about the way it works, they can have a big company, like let's say Target when they were hacked in 2013, or Equifax when they were hacked a few years ago. Big, data-rich companies that also have a lot of resources to deal with cybersecurity themselves. But they also work with a lot of partners. Partners who might be much smaller and may have access to their back office systems. The Target example, sort of a classic one, their heating and air conditioning supplier in West Virginia got hacked. Small company, 100 people. I actually was part of that hack, by the way, and I found out uh, when my wife uh, one day asked me, hey, why are you opening up eHarmony accounts? And you know, actually I wasn't opening up eHarmony accounts. Really? I was just shopping at Target, yeah. Uh -huh. And so this sort of inspired me, okay, why is this starting to happen? Equifax, same thing. It was a second tier subcontractor yeah. that got hacked. And then they had access to the back office system. Mm -hmm. The data set that we've looked at over the last 10 years, 2010, only about 20% of cyber attacks came through the supply chain. Now it's about 65%. So almost a full two thirds. And again, we have these big resource rich companies that are hard to penetrate, but then they have all of these smaller suppliers with much weaker defenses that have access. So the big, the big companies have got smarter and so have the cyber thieves. Absolutely. Right, so what's the relative impact of a direct attack on an organization versus that which comes through a supply chain partner? Well, that's what's so interesting is the attack, not only are they more frequent coming through the supply chain partners, they're more impactful. Mm -hmm. And so we looked specifically at, okay, when there's an operations disruption, is the disruption longer? Or when there's a financial data breach, is the impact to the stock price worse? And every time it's worse when it comes to the supply chain. And if you think about it, it kind of makes sense. It's like, okay, well, if I have a fire in my house, I can see the fires there pretty quickly and start to deal with it. If the fire's in my neighbor's house, I'm not gonna maybe be aware of that until the fire's really gotten out of control mm. and can do a lot more damage. And so because the attacks are happening elsewhere where they may not necessarily have uh, any visibility, it's worse and they go on for longer. So it goes on for longer before you can actually detect it when it comes through the supply chain. Given that a supply chain is by definition a group of, of, of independent partners all coming together for a common purpose, it seems like almost an insurmountable problem to control that incredibly large number of organizations, many of which are quite small, quite unsophisticated. I mean, what do you do, Right. basically? And so there's a couple different things to do. And, and you know, it's, it's actually the opposite of the way you deal with most suppliers. Because most suppliers, you think, okay, the 20% of our SKU, 80% of our spend, right? The, the A-level suppliers, that's who we're dealing with. But this is sort of the opposite, where it's coming through your smaller suppliers that maybe you wouldn't normally spend that much time thinking about. Mm -hmm. And so really, there's no way to audit every supplier. There's no way to constantly check in with every supplier. And so essentially what you have to do is you have to program in security at the beginning of the relationship. And so that requires some sort of cross-functional team where it's not just the supply managers, but also the end users, some folks from cybersecurity, and understanding what all the permissions are that these companies need to have within your own company. Mm. And then you sort of have defense in depth. You, know, you can compare it to a house. Anyone who's your supplier, they have a key to your front door, right? No matter how well locked and guarded the front door is, they have a key, and that's what you have to accept those keys from getting away. And so what then you need to do behind that is you lock every other door in the house. So door to the kitchen, door to, and so that way you sort of segment it, require multiple logins. You know, Target really got in trouble because they didn't have any segmentation in their back office system. That heating and air conditioning uh, supplier, <laughs> um, they were able to get into Target's point of sale system. They weren't restricted to exactly nope. what the information they, that they needed to exactly. see. Exactly. Why does the heating and air conditioning supplier need point of sale data? Well, they don't, but there was no segmentation. And to be fair, this is 2013, things weren't as sophisticated then. Mm -hmm. But you know, Walmart actually had the same exact supplier. And where Target lost the records of 150 million customers, including mm -hmm. me, yeah. Walmart lost the records of zero customers. And it's because they had segmentation and defense in depth behind the system. And so, 
like you alluded to, there's no way that you can check every single supplier, especially these small, you know, one-off suppliers. Maybe we don't worry about that much. But if you build in the security at the beginning, mm -hmm. almost as a preventative measure, that's where you can start to have some success. It, it's yeah. much better to treat the symptoms, or sorry, treat the disease, right, than, sure. than the symptoms. Now, the hot topic in supply chain today on the technology side is digitization. Yes. Great deal, I and mean, you're taking a lot of manual processes mm -hmm. and you're automating them, which is a really good thing. Yeah. But does it also leave companies more open to sure. cyber, th cyber threats as a result of everything being digital? Absolutely, well, we're more connected than we've ever been before. Yeah. You know, there's hundreds of millions of IoT devices, gonna be billions, mm -hmm. and they're all over the place. Everything from pieces of equipment to trucks to fish tanks, everything is very, very fish connected. Fish tanks, is, you, know, you don't throw that off lightly, that actually happened. That actually happened, that's right. A hotel yeah. in Las Vegas, they were hacked because they had a cool fish tank that where their right. colors would change to the music. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know they got it and, and took a whole bunch of credit cards from there through the fish tank. And so even something as small and seemingly insignificant as that can become a new vulnerability. And mm -hmm. actually where we saw a lot of it happening in this last year was folks working from home. So as businesses become decentralized, now right. instead of maybe you working on your, your network in the building, you're at home and you're using some router that you got eight years ago at Best Buy and you haven't patched it. And we actually saw a huge spike in attacks on personal routers and sort of digital infrastructure. So VPNs, WebEx, things like that. Yeah. Over the last, last summer and then through the fall, there was a big surge of attack on that because you know hackers are very opportunistic. The same way that they look at, okay, the supplier has a weak infrastructure, weak defenses. People working at their house also had very weak defenses. Yeah. And so again, it's, it's really a sort of this dance that companies and the hackers do where new vulnerability opens up, okay, we need to cover that. New vulnerability opens up, needs to cover that. It feels so, like we're one step behind though. Like, you know, we're, we're, we're covering up something, right. whereas the hackers, are, they're off to the, to the next big thing. Well, you so. know, it's, it's interesting you say that it because it's, it's not always necessarily true. A lot of times, yeah, when the hackers have a success, you see it. Mm -hmm. When the defense has a success, you don't see it. Right. Right. And so in many ways, there is this idea, oh, the hacker's always ahead of defense. Defense is actually great. But if you cover 99 possible attack avenues out of 100, everyone's going to focus on that one. Yeah, we and didn't so see- And so it's an impossible job. We did not see headlines that said, Walmart prevents hackers from entering exactly. records through air, through air conditioning and heating. Well, I don't, know that, I don't know that I would have clicked on that one. <laughs> In fact, you telling me that today is the first time it ever occurred to me right. that Walmart was under the same circumstances, and but they don't get a big headline. No, absolutely so, not. All right. Well, Zach Rogers, thank you so much for helping us to understand what's going on in the world of cybersecurity and maybe give us an idea that there are some solutions out there and that we shouldn't despair like Absolutely. we sometimes want to. <laughs> Absolutely. And you know, when we talk to, to supply managers and we say, hey, how important is this? It's always ranked behind price, cost, delivery, all these things. Yeah. But in many ways, it's it's we're sort of seeing something like we saw with sustainability. 15 years ago, mm -hmm. where it's gone from not even being on scorecards to now at least being let's, some let's metric. Move it up yeah, and, and in, I think we'll start to see it move up further Great. and further as we go through. Thank you time. so much. Appreciate Absolutely. talking. Thank talking. you. That was Zach Rogers of Colorado State University talking about cybersecurity in the supply chain. Thank you very much for watching.